Hello and welcome to the 10th video in this introduction to neural network series. So in this video then we're going to start putting the code in to make our neural network. And to get a head start with this then I've added a new file called nnet.py. I'm importing numpy as np and scipy.special and we can start making a class to deal with our neural net. And the good news is we've seen all of the code in the previous video uh, about numpy to explain all the stuff that we're doing so we can get through this relatively quickly. So we'll start with the class definition. And when we define our class, then we'll take in the number of input nodes, the number of hidden nodes, and the number of output nodes. And each of those then we'll save as a property of the class. And now we can generate then our weights. Now the way we're going to generate the weights, remember from the previous video when we looked at the NumPy stuff, so between the input and the hidden, we'll have a range of minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. And the size then is the number of hidden nodes by the number of input nodes and then we'll have some weights between the hidden nodes and the output nodes very very similar but this time the shape is number of output nodes as the rows and number of hidden nodes as the as the columns and last but not least we need also our activation function as well and that then covers the definition of our neural network class what we need now is we need a way of getting we're asking the neural net for a given input to give us then its output. Now remember in our case we're going to be having an output simply of one value and we'll be sending the neural net a standard one-dimensional array as the input. So we need to take this inputs list and turn that then into an output. And the first thing to do is transpose this single list into a two-dimensional list that has the rows and columns correctly. You remember from the previous video that the inputs list is simply one-dimensional. We need to convert that so that we've got effectively a row for each of the inputs. And what I'm also going to do here, and I'll, we'll take it out then from the code, but just at the end so we can test how things are working, is I'm going to print also this inputs that we've generated here so we can have a look at it in the consoles, check how things are working. The next thing then is to multiply these inputs by the weights that we have to get the hidden layer inputs. And again, I'm going to print that out as well. And now we want to run the activation function to get our hidden output and again print to the console again and we'll remove these prints afterwards it's just as a check. So now we have our hidden outputs we want the to go from the hidden layer to the output layer. So the way we do this then is multiply the weights that we've got between the weights hidden output and the hidden outputs and finally run the activation function on that and we have our outputs and then we can return our final outputs. What we also need then from this function is I would like something that just gets us the max value. Remember the final outputs will look like a two-dimensional array with one value inside the inner array. I want this maximum value because we only want one value back and that'll be flap or not. So we'll say get max value. We'll take in the inputs list. We'll say that our outputs are equal to self.getoutputs for the inputs list and then return the max value. And that's all we need to do for our neural net class. We have everything we need inside there. Theoretically, if we give a single dimension array of inputs, it'll be two inputs for our neural network, we will get returned the maximum value returned from the outputs of that neural network. So it's now just for this video, define a small function called tests. And here we'll make ourselves a new uh, neural network and print the weights. And now let's pretend that we, we have some inputs. So let's call uh, our inputs, or we'll make an inputs array. And we'll say 0 0.2 by 0 0.6. So imagine those are the two normalized inputs that we have. And now we can ask the neural net to get us our output. And last but not least, the only thing remaining then is just to test this. And hopefully spelling mistakes aside, we've got everything in here that we need to run this neural network class, run the tests and see what we get. So let's have a look. And we see here there in the console that we get, first of all, the printing out of our weights from the input to the hidden. If I refer back to this slide that we prepared, you'll remember that the first matrix of the weights between the inputs and the hidden nodes, so this uh, matrix I've got highlighted here, has the shape of the number of columns is the number of input nodes, 
and then the number of rows is the number of hidden nodes. And if we look at weight input hidden, you can see here that we've got two columns, which is the number of input nodes, and then the number of rows is five, which is the number of hidden rows. So we've got the correct shape there of our uh, weights between the input and the hidden. If we look at the weights between the hidden and then the output, we have got here number of columns are the same as the number of hidden, so we would want five columns in our case, remember, for our network. And then the number of rows are then the same number as output. Now in our network then we have five, so number of columns for the hidden, and then the output, remember, we've only got one output, so we have one row. So we've got the correct shape then for our weights going in, bet weights between the input and the hidden nodes, and we've got the correct shape for the weights between the hidden and the output nodes. We've got our inputs then, which have gone into the neural net, and you can see they've been transposed and converted so that we've got a matrix that is two rows and one column. They get multiplied to give us then the hidden inputs, which again is five rows, one column, so for each of those nodes, goes through sigma to get the outputs. Then we get our final inputs from the multiplication, and then we get our final output just after going through sigma and the max value then for these, these inputs, the neural network has returned a zero point. 5, 1. Good, so everything seems to be working okay then. We've got our neural network class written. That was uh, fairly simple. What I'm going to do now just before finishing the video is remove all of the print statements on here so that we don't have these messing us up when we run it later on. I'm going to actually remove all this code and also the tests function as well because we don't need that anymore and leave the rest of it. But we now have a neural net class that we can use inside our bird to be able to make decisions on whether to flap or not, which is something we'll have a look at in the next video. So hopefully that was clear. Uh, comments, questions, um, criticisms as well. Welcome, as always, on YouTube. See you in the next one.